Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get subscribed, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. Continuing with this month's feature, looking at these extra modulators down here that we have in Massive Key Tracking, Velocity and Trigger Random in particular. I'm going to show you how to make this arpeggiator sound and also some interesting things using the randomize function within the performers or LFOs or steppers to create some quite interesting results. We're also making full use of some of these velocity key tracking trigger random modulators on various parameters in this instance of Massive to kind of just strengthen your understanding of how these can affect the sound. So let's start off create a new sound. For oscillator 1 I'm going to go for the Digi2 wavetable, Digicook 2 wavetable really nice kind of uh, raspy tone pitch it down two octaves and let's pull this intensity control down a little bit to just take off some of that kind of top end slightly turn on oscillator 2 next and I'm gonna go for a deep throat wavetable in here pitch up one octave Take some of that top end again using the intensity control. And then let's turn on oscillator 3 next. Keep it as a square saw 1. But let's just bring that intensity control right round here to about a third of the way up and bring the amp down a bit as well. Let's go back to oscillator 2, the deep throat wavetable. Quite interesting results when we move this wavetable position control. So rather than using a modulator or one of the kind of more common modulators in Massive, like an LFO or envelope, I'm going to use trigger random here to modulate this wavetable position. So we're getting some quite varied results there, quite interesting sound. And I'm also going to use some velocity on oscillator 3 here, apply it to the amp of oscillator 3. just getting some nice variation on the sound so next thing we could do probably is set up the arpeggiator so in this first LFO slot here let's convert this into a stepper sync this stepper and take the ratio to 1 over 12 uh, it's going to give us quite an interesting groove to this arpeggiator and we can hold shift here and click and drag the crosshair of this stepper and drop it in the pitch modulation slot, the first pitch modulation slot on all three oscillators and then holding ALT or OPTION we can click and drag up so we're applying plus 12 semitones pitch modulation to these three oscillators so effectively we've got an octaves worth of kind of pitch modulation that we can apply in here and with this stepper set kind of synced to 1 over 12 activate the snap to grid function so then we get absolute values in here and I'm going to go plus 3, plus 5 plus 2, plus 5 So keeping it in a minor scale. Still getting that quite nice variation on the sound. So with this stepper set up, let's activate one of these filters now. So filter one slot. Activate the double notch filter. And with high resonant values, we get quite an interesting sort of tone and character on the sound using one of these double notch filters. So let's bring the resonance down a bit. And I want to apply some key tracking to this resonance here actually, because I notice if I go... Yeah, 
probably want to bring that resonance down as we go really high up the keyboard so we don't get too too much of a kind of like resonant tone on the sound if you're playing some really high notes so key tracking macro control or modulator down here and let's just pull down on that modulation amount so higher up the keyboard we go the less resonance we're going to get on the sound and let's use a performer to modulate this cutoff frequency here so in the second LFO slot convert this into a performer click and drag the crosshair of this performer to the cutoff frequency click and drag up getting that kind of like filter frequency modulation going on so let's set up this this filter here let's sync it do a ratio of 4 over 12 let's bring this X fade sequence to the top use one of these curves here um, we can just click and drag to the right with that highlighted just click and drag to the right and it just converts them all so we've got quite a funky sort of kind of filter frequency modulation going on and we can use some more key tracking here actually click and drag the modulator key tracking modulator over to this filter mix slot and let's not apply full modulation amount around halfway because I notice actually setting this sound up and let's bring the level of the second filter up nice to get that kind of unfiltered sound coming through as well so with this key tracking go high up the keyboard getting less of that sort of that double notch filter going on and if we go low down get more of it back in again and let's set up a variation for this performer in the bottom half of the x-fade sequence load curve maybe just load a slightly different curve in here so now bit of a quicker sort of speed on that kind of modulation could also actually use this performer to modulate the amp of the first oscillator so I'm going to click and drag the crosshair of this performer over to the first modulation slot on the amp of oscillator 1, pull the amp down, click and drag up on the modulation amount so just gives us quite a nice varied tone again and um, yeah let's set up another performer here use this to modulate the amp of oscillator 2 and let's set this performer here, sync it take the ratio to 3 over 12 loading some different curves in here can just solo oscillator 2 now so we can hear what we're doing a bit more So we've got those performers set up in there. Let's add some effects to the sound now. So in the first effects slot, I'm going to add a flanger, positive. Take this dry wet down. And that rate gets quite interesting when we take that rate right up. So I can apply some key tracking to the rate. So as we play higher up the keyboard, we're getting a faster rate on the flanger as opposed to when we play lower down on the keyboard. Let's pull this feedback down a little bit and let's add some velocity to the depth of the flanger. So a lighter key press. We're getting less of that effect. Press the key a bit harder. Getting more of that flanger sound on there. Okay, let's apply some reverb in here as well. Pull this dry wet down a bit. You notice this colour here, it's kind of like a sort of high frequency control for the reverb. So, we could apply some key tracking to that. So, higher up the keyboard, we're going to get some more 
almost like the key tracking that's applied to the filters really working in a similar way higher up the keyboard we're getting more high frequency content on the reverb as opposed to much lower down it's just adding to that kind of expressive sound that we're creating expressive arpeggiator sound so EQ do a similar thing with the key track in here just on the high shelf so higher at the keyboard we're going to get more sort of top end on the sound as opposed to kind of lower down on the keyboard and can maybe add a little bit of noise to the sound but rather than using the white noise use something different experiment with some of these kind of noise sounds so you got a lot of options in here so go for metallic sounds okay but it's a bit harsh what I could use is a performer maybe to modulate this so it's adding just a little bit of transient to the sound okay so with all of that set up another thing I wanted to look at was uh, the randomized feature in the performers so obviously we've got this trigger random down here that's just going to give us random values on modulation amounts and um, I thought this is quite interesting and just an experimental way of using the performers really uh, was the randomize function so with this performer here set to modulate the amp of oscillator 1 and the filter frequency let's mute oscillator 2 and oscillator 3 for now <laughs> got these two kind of x-fade sequences going on click the drop down menu on this randomize function and we can start randomizing different things in here and we can set it to randomize just the levels upper levels lower levels the curves or just the whole performer which will randomize both the levels and the curves so with this x-fade sequence the top sequence we like this and let's just get experimental with the the bottom sequence so randomize lower performer and and with that kind of randomized set we can just hit it again to randomize it again and just randomize it until you hear something that you like it's just going to set performer up in a way that you probably wouldn't think to do so ordinarily so so move to the second performer here turn on oscillator 2 now do a similar thing in here, randomize the lower performer. And it's just setting these crazy kind of performer sequences that we maybe wouldn't program if we were just sort of setting up one ourselves from scratch. So some interesting things there for the kind of randomized features in these performers so turn on oscillator 3 again and give the sound a spin okay so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial I hope you found it useful I hope you've got better understanding now key tracking velocity and trigger random kind of modulators in massive any questions please get in touch and make sure you get over to the massivesynth.com website tons more tutorials on native instruments massive in there and thanks for watching hope to see you again soon cheers bye